Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. We're continuing our playthrough of Aliens, the board game by Leading Edge Games. This time it's war. <laughs> what a catchphrase. And it is kind of war-like. We made it out of the reactor room, but not without some casualties. We lost about half of our team, if not a little bit more. We're left with Hicks, Apone, Hudson, and Crow. Now they're going to be joined by Burke, Newt, Ripley, and Gorman. They're actually all on the APC right now, and we're going to be heading back to operations. And before then, we're going to call Spunkmeyer and Farrow and tell them to get us out of here. Now to do that, there's a scenario that we're going to play out. And if that scenario, if they're able to survive that scenario, we can choose another branch to go if we wish. If not, we're just going to continue with the normal movie line scenario. Will Spunkmeyer and Pharaoh hold out against the alien? If not, will these Marines even make it off of LV-426? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table. All right, so we're gonna start with this scenario. Let's see how it goes. An alien starts on Spunkmeyer. He has a chance to fend it off. So let's see how he does. <laughs> he did not do well at all. That's pretty much the worst thing that could have happened. So he didn't make it. Oop, bump the camera. Now that means that the alien has come into the, or has opened the door to the cockpit of the dropship, Pharaoh pulls out her pistol, but it takes her two actions to do it, meaning that this alien has a chance to jump on top of her. Let's see if she can fend off the alien. She did, she knocked it off. All right, so that means it's gonna take his entire action to stand up, meaning that she has a chance to shoot this alien off. Her pistol stats are the same as Gorman's. So she's gonna fire, she needs a five. If she can get a five or better, then she's able to knock, shoot the alien, hopefully survive acid splash and rescue the Marines. She did not. She got an eight. Good try, Pharaoh. The alien jumps on her again. Now she again gets a chance to fend it off. She did not. And, well, at least she got a shot. That's better than what happened in the movie. She didn't even get a shot off in the movie. So both of our characters died. Spunkmire and Pharaoh did not land the dropship. It crashed. There's a big scene with fireballs and everything. The Marines now are stuck in operations and they have to try to get through. Okay, we've lost Spunkmire and Pharaoh. We're going to move into the operations. This scenario takes place over a certain amount of turns. There are different colors of numbers on here. These signify different types or different places the aliens are coming out of the ceiling or up through the floor. There's going to be a there's a certain order you have to do. So I'm gonna pan out. This is the order that has to take place. It has to go Burke, Newt, and Ripley. The reason it has to go Burke first is because he's gonna start on a seven and we're gonna watch helplessly, just like the Marines did in the movie. He's going to run straight for this door, lock himself in, and we have to use a torch to get through this door. Every Marine has a torch except for Gorman and then the civilians. And once they reach that spot, they can spend a few turns trying to burn through the door. The other stipulation is that Newt and Ripley have to work, Mar Ripley has to take Newt back to this door. Once she does that, she can come back up and help the Marines fight off the aliens. But her first priority is the safety of Newt. So she's going to do that. That's what she has to do at the beginning of this scenario, as, for the first few turns of this scenario. These Marines, on the other hand, they think they can win the battle. So they're going to stay here and they're going to fire and fire and 
kill as many aliens as they can, eventually they will realize it's a losing battle and will start and then they'll have the ability to start running back towards here. Now they can't leave the red numbers or anything adjacent to a red number until that point on the turn chart. I'm gonna go over and show you that turn chart in just a second, but I just wanted to give you a few little rules as to how this scenario plays out. Other than that, the only still rules we're still playing with is if I roll a zero, another alien will appear. Also, we are still going to keep track of our ammo. And as you could tell from that last scenario, we lost our flame unit and our shotgun. It does, to, you wanna to try to keep your ammo. All our Marines also get to use their bottom weapon now. So all of them have pulse rifles. All the Marines we have in this, in this scenario have pulse rifles, which is great for shooting aliens long range. I kind of wish we had at least one flame unit because if one gets close to us and we have to shoot with a pulse rifle, there could be acid damage and that could just be bad news. But for what we have, we have to play with what we got. Of course, we do have Gorman. He's, he's our spectacular leader. He has got a pistol. He's not a very good leader in this movie. So we're going to go over the turn chart, show you what it's all about, and then we're going to come back and put our Marines on the board and also our five aliens. Five aliens? Yes, you heard me right, five aliens. They're all going to come out on the blue. And then after a little while, they're going to start coming out on the gray. I'm going to pan out now and show you the rest of this turn chart. So we've also got gray numbers, and we also have this asterisk. This is where the Marines believe that they don't have the ability to win this battle and can start falling back. Then eventually we have red numbers, and those are going to be the red numbers over on the board. So all these different numbers and colors signify where certain aliens are going to come out. I'm going to move this camera and show you even the rest of this turn track. So we also have this B. This B is where Burke finally goes in and decides that he doesn't want to be any part of this and will move into another room unless we've called out to him a few times. The other numbers you see with the little boxes on them, they're actually going to be the ones that are in the air ducts themselves. So when we're doing the turn, we're going to move it down. Eventually, when the Marines can get to that door, they can attempt to use a blowtorch, like I said. And you're going to put this door marker three away from where it is. And once it gets to that turn, the turn marker gets down to that door marker, that means that the door is open and the Marines can get in. They'll then close the door behind them as soon as all the Marines are in there. Once that happens, you're gonna count 15 squares down from this, and you're gonna re-put that door marker. Once that marker's hit, that signifies that the aliens have broken through the door and operations are pouring into the air ducts. And you don't wanna be around when that happens because they're just gonna start coming right at you. And they're, it's an endless horde is what it is. So that's the turn chart. So we're gonna start with five aliens coming in. So let's roll those aliens and bring them onto the board. So now we're going to place our Marines and then our five aliens. So we have to start by placing Burke on the seven. He has to go there. Newton Ripley, we can kind of place them where we want to. I'm going to put them up there. Hicks, I'm going to put here, a pwn here, Hudson here, and Crow here. Gorman is going to stand, oh, maybe I'll put him in front. I could, there we go. He's going to go right there. And that's going to be our starting order for our Marines. So our turn order is going to be Burke, then Newt, then Ripley, and then all these alien Marines, and then Gorman. Now let's roll up those five aliens and see where they land. Now I do have my handy dandy dice shaker. And I've got, oh, of course I got a zero, those are fun. Two, two, six, and a nine, and then my zero, another zero. Wow, that's amazing. A one, okay, let's put those five on and then I'll roll one more alien after that. So we got three in the nine. They're gonna move there, here's another one, and here's one more. Now there's some blue squares. These blue squares, you need to use two movement to walk through them. So an alien, when it appears, can't walk onto it. It takes two movement to walk onto that square. So those three, oh, one's a door marker, that was magic. Let's put him over there. So there's our first three aliens. Oh, my mistake. I had a 9, 9, and a 6. Well, a 6 is still going to end up there. 4 there. So a 9, 9, 6, 2, 2, 1, and then one more. A 7. He's going to be right here. 
I also am able to use grenades in this scenario, but the grenade table is a real dangerous table. Here's the table itself. So as you can see, if you get anything within a one or zero, it's dead. So if I could get a grenade right here, that'd blow almost all those aliens up. That'd be fantastic. The problem is a Marine has to be at least nine squares away or they're wounded and you could wound every one of these guys just by firing that grenade back here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I mean, you have to be back here in order for it not to affect you. And it's just wounding that many characters is just not beneficial. So we're gonna start our turn. Burke makes a sprint for the door. Newt moves one here, Ripley moves one here, and Ripley does get to shoot before she moves. One, two, three, four. She's got, she's not as well trained as a Marine, so her numbers are not as good. But I'm gonna spend two actions to fire at a six, and hopefully we can take this alien out. We did not, that's okay. She's gonna move back here. And we do have our ammo tracker still, so we're gonna find Ripley and we're gonna mark off one on her pulse rifle. And then we're gonna move on to the other ones. And I'm just gonna say that I'm marking them off. That way I don't have to keep bringing this sheet in and out. But if something significant happens, I'll bring this sheet in and show you. Our next Marine to go is Hicks. One, two, three, four, five squares away. Hicks needs a seven or better with his pulse rifle. So he can do an aim shot and then he's just gonna do a normal shot. So he needs a seven to kill one. And he got a two, so he killed this one. Now he's one, two, six squares away. So now he's gonna need a two. He got a four, so he missed. And we're gonna mark two on his pulse rifle track. A pwn is our next Marine. He's gonna fire one, two, three, four, five. He's gonna go for that same seven and a two. So let's get those aliens. Come on, good, got one. And they need a two or better. Come on, get a two or better. Oh, no, we got a five. And by better, I always mean lower. I, always, I have a tendency to say, and better, but that I know better means lower in this game. So I killed one alien. And I marked two off on his uh, pulse rifle ammo chart. Hudson and Crow are next, and they're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and six. So he's gonna sh Hudson's gonna shoot this one. At six squares away, he needs a six or better with an aim shot, and that's what he's gonna do. He got a four, so this one's dead. Crow then is gonna fire, and he's gonna fire at that one. And he needs the same thing, a six. Oh, I got an eight, he missed, that's no good. Oh well. And both of them are going to use one bullet on their pulse rifle. Last but not least, we got Gorman. One, two, three, four, five squares away. He needs a, <laughs> the pistols are just terrible. So he's gonna do an aim shot, needs a zero. Oh, he didn't get it. Well. Gorman doesn't do much of anything most of the time. Their valiant leader's not too, too valiant. So now the aliens are gonna move and the turn tracker's gonna move as well. So I'm gonna move these aliens and they go one, two, three, four, because it takes two to move through that blue. One, two, three, four. And this one's gonna go one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. He can move into it, he just can't move out of it. And now we're gonna go back to our turn tracker and see what's next. According to our turn tracker, we're gonna go from five aliens to four blue aliens. Still a lot of aliens. So I got my handy dandy dice shaker, and we got a six, eight, nine, and four. So let's go put those aliens on the board and shoot them. So I've got a six, an eight, a nine, and a four. More aliens, look at them all. All right, we're gonna continue on. Burke. <laughs> This mean evil man, one, two, is gonna move two squares. Newt has to move two. Now Ripley again can take one more shot before she has to run back here. One, two, three squares away. Now again, she's really not that good. She needs a one or better. I mean, it's, it's rough, it's rough, but we can maybe do it, come on. Nope, didn't do it, okay. And then she moves, one, two. Back right next to Newt. Now come the Marines, come on, let's blow these guys up. One, two, three squares. Hicks needs a, looks like an eight. So he needs an eight with his pulse rifle. So he's gonna fire with his pulse rifle and he's an eight. Oh no, he got a nine, that's terrible. All right, and then he needs a one, two, three squares. Now, <laughs> now he needs a three. Let's see if he can get a three. Nope, he got his eight though, that's fantastic. So Hicks fired twice. A pwn's next, he's gotta do better than that. One, two, three, he needs an eight and a three. Come on, a pwn. An eight, good work. 
and then a three. Nope, you got an eight. Awesome. As an awesome, I mean not awesome. Mark off two more bullets on his weapon track. Now it's Hudson and Crow. They both need sevens to blow these two aliens up. So Hudson's first. Oh no, this is terrible. And then Crow's next. He got one. Okay, so one's dead. All right. I can't believe it's down to Gorman here. Come on, Gorman. One, two, three squares. Gorman can either roll two zeros or one one. Oh man. <laughs> Sadly, I don't know the odds on that. I wish I was more of a mathematician to know if I should roll two zeros or one one. But we're going to roll for two zeros, I think. You never know. Nope. And another one. Nope. You got nothing. Way to go, Gorman. You are still nothing. By nothing, I mean nothing. He's going to go one, two, three, right under Gorman. And these guys come down. One, two, three, four. Oh, no. Here comes acid splash damage. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. This one goes one, two, three, four. Wow, there's a lot of aliens. I don't know if I can take them all out. Oh, we'll see how we can do here. We just have only one we really have to worry about that's going to hit us with acid. But the rest of these do have to get killed. That's the deal. Well, now we're going to see how aliens attack. Oh, first we have to do the alien placement. So we're going to go back to our turn chart. All right, we're doing a little bit better this time. We only have to place two blue aliens. And they're going to be at two and one. So let's go put those aliens on the board and see if we can take these aliens out. I hope we can. Okay, so we're going to put our alien here and here. And now the next thing we have to do is Gorman has an alien on him. So we have to go to the alien attack phase. So we're going to roll one die and see what happens to Gorman. Hopefully nothing too bad. Something really bad. Something really bad happened to Gorman. He is incapacitated. So we're going to flip his little marker down and he's grabbed. I think that might be the end of Gorman. I don't see any hope for him. Sorry, Gorman. Well, we're going to move on. Burke goes first. He goes two squares towards that door. Newt also has to move two. One, two. She's going to move towards that door. Now, Ripley has to follow two, but she could take a shot before she goes if she wants. We have an alien that could cause a lot of acid damage here if we decide to do this. Uh... Let's give it a shot. It's, it's a shot in the dark anyway for a two. We need a two because the alien's two squares away. One, two. Let's see if we even get this alien. We didn't. Okay, not a big deal. So mark that down for Ripley. Next, we're going to move her two. One, two. Now comes the hard part. What are we going to do? I think Hicks is going to start taking some of these aliens out back here. And a pawn might be the one that takes that out and then tries to take out another one. We'll see. First, let's look at Hicks. Hicks is firing at an alien. One, two, three squares away. So I think we're going to go for that eight again and then possibly a three. So let's see how we do here. He needs an eight. And he got a nine again. Oh, he's just been terrible. Let's see. We're going to roll for a three then next. Oh, he got nothing. Oh, this is bad news. I'm going to mark two bullets on Hicks. A pwn is next. I think he's going to have to take this alien out. He's going to try to just do three shots really close range here and really try to take out some aliens. He's going to go for that one right in front of the seven first. All right, here we go. Okay, he got it. Now comes the tough part. We have to do three acid damage to all these people. So I'm going to remove that alien. The first person we're going to do is a pawn. Nothing happens to a pawn. All right. The next person we're going to do is going to be Hudson. Oh, Hudson's wounded. Okay, not too bad. Could be a lot worse. And our last person is Crow. Nothing happened to Crow. He's good. All right, so Hicks, Hudson got wounded, not the end of the world. So that's one shot with a pwn. A pwn has two more actions. He's going to fire again at two squares away at a four, and then he's going to fire at a three. I really need to take a lot of these aliens out. Now with Hudson wounded, it's not going to happen very well. So he needs a four. He got it. Good. All right. Opponents killed that one. Now he's got to fire at a three squares away. He's going to fire at that one because these two are two squares away from them. Three squares there. Come on. He needs a three. Oh, he didn't get it. All right. Not the end of the world. But I'm going to mark down three bullets for a pwn. That's quite a bit of shooting for him. The next person to go is Hudson. He's wounded. 
So two squares away, he needs a six to hit this alien, and that's what he's got to do. He got it. Oh, it's off camera. I got to roll it again. Three. He got it. Good. Okay. So Hudson has killed an alien. I'm going to mark that down on his ammo tracker here and remove this alien. We have two aliens left we have to kill, but I don't think it's going to happen. Another person's going to have an alien on him. Oh, no. Or do I really risk it? Three squares away. I need two twos. I don't think I'm going to get that. Do I push my luck and go for two twos or just take the seven and have somebody else take an alien here? Oh, it's a tough call. We're going to go for the seven. I have to kill at least one. Oh, I should have gone for the two twos. Oh, well, we got one. Crow killed an alien. And that's the end of this round. So we have to go to the turn marker, and we'll do that. But first, we're going to get rid of Gorman. He is gone now. The aliens have grabbed Gorman. Goodbye, Gorman. Now we're going to move our aliens. This one's going to go one, two, and he's equidistant to all three of these guys. So we're going to go zero through three with a three, four through six, and seven through nine, right? No, that's wrong. We're just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We'll count it that way, that's a little bit easier. Nope, that was cocked eye. All right, here we go. Two, one, two, it's on Hudson. All right, Hudson takes an alien. This one goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, and now we're gonna go back to our turn marker. Our turn marker shows five aliens coming in, and they're going to come in in the gray area. So it's going to be the more, it's going to be more of an area up here. But let's go and roll for these aliens. All right, we have five aliens. Okay, we got a five, five, seven, seven, eight. Let's go put those aliens on the board. So we got five, five, seven, and eight, and eight. So these guys are going to be back here. All right, not too bad. Now we have to see what happens to Hudson. He's got an alien on him. And a three. Oh, no. Let's see. <laughs> He's wounded and grabbed. So if you get wounded and then you're wounded again, you become incapacitated. So Hudson is, you'd flip his card back over, but you put his marker down to indicate that he's been incapacitated. He can still get wounded one more time, even though he's incapacitated. But I think that's going to be the end of Hudson as well. Man, we keep losing these Marines. All right. Now we have to go first with Drew Burke. He's going to move through the door down here, which is a little out of camera. I'm going to move this. There we go. Now those guys are out of camera. Okay, we're just going to zoom out. Ta-da! We're going to go one, two. He's back here. These two are going to go one, two. Now that she's safely at the door, Ripley can come back up, and I think we need her help. Hudson's kind of in trouble here, but now it's these three guys. Hicks, one, two, three, four squares away. He's going to kind of have to shoot at that guy. So at four squares, he needs that, he needs an eight and then a two again. Oh no, sorry, that's a shotgun. How about a nine, or eight and a three? That's a little bit better. So he's gonna shoot eight and three right here. So the first one had an eight, he got it. Thank you, Hicks, you haven't been doing too well. Oh, he got both of them, good job. I marked two on his ammo tracker. Wow, he hadn't been shooting good the last few times, so it's good to see he'd made his mark this time. Now a pwn, one, two, three, four, five, six, is gonna take out some of these guys. He needs a seven and a two. Let's hopefully get lucky that, like we did last time and take out two. That would really help our cause here. So we need a seven. We got one. Let's take this one out. And then we need a two. Oh, we got two again. Oh, that's so good. And I marked two more on his ammo tracker. Now Crow is the only one left. And he's going to go one, two, three, four, five. He's got one shot. He's going to take it right here. He needs a six or better with his pulse rifle. And better, I mean lower. But I always say better. Oh, and he didn't get it. Darn it. Oh, well. Not the end of the world. And that's the end of this round. Let's move on to the next round. These aliens are going to move four squares. One, two, three, four. So not on us yet. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. We're not doing too bad. Well, <laughs> we've lost a couple people, so we're not doing all that great either. Because now Hudson, that means he's gone as well. He's been taken by the aliens. Now let's go to our turn marker and see how many aliens come in. According to our turn marker, it looks like we're getting four this time, and they're going to be in the gray. So we're going to roll those dice. We got a six, a six, a one, and a nine. All right, let's go put those aliens on. Okay, we got six, six, one, and nine. I got a whole mess in my hand here. Let's see if I, there, this might make it a little bit easier. Okay. Six, six, one, nine. Perfect. All right. They're all just hanging out. They're ready to pounce on us. Here we go. 
Now, Burke is going to go first. He's going to just stand there. He's, thanks a lot, man. Locked us in. That's the greatest. Newt's next. Now, there is one more rule with Burke I haven't mentioned, and it's a tricky, sneaky rule. Burke is a member of the corporation. He has an arterial, his, his arterial motive is to bring the aliens back. But he is still human after all. And hearing all the gunfire and the screams happening in operations, there's a chance that we might appease to his conscience and he'll open the door for us. His conscience isn't very high though. I need a zero. If you can roll a zero, Burke will open the door and he'll let you all in and you don't have to use the torch. You only get two rolls on this and then he moves over into that other room. So our first roll to see if Burke is opening the door. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Newt stays there, but Ripley's going to move back up. One, two, three, so that she can help out in this gunfight, because I really need some help. Hicks is next. He's going to roll a few good dice here. He's going to go for, he's going to shoot this one, one, two, three, right here. And he needs that eight. So we're going to roll the eight first, and then we might try to shoot that one. Well, that's a cock die. So you, got a, you got a seven, so that's enough. So we kill this one. Now, he can shoot two squares, one, two, and he needs a four. So he's going to go for that four over here. And he got it, yes. Hicks is redeeming himself. I marked two more on our ammo tracker. Now opponent's next, one, two, three squares away. I think we might save that one for Crow. And he's going to shoot one, two, three, four, five, six up here at a seven or better. I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to shoot that one first. And he got it, so this one's dead. Now I think he is going to take this shot at three squares away. He needs a three or better. And he got a two, but it's off camera. Darn it. All right, let's roll it again. Oh, he still got a two. All right, good. And I marked two more on his pulse rifle. So he killed this one and this one. That's great. <laughs> Crow is the only one left. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's just shoot that one. Call it a day. We're doing pretty good now. Things are kind of starting to look like, I don't know why I'm, why I'm cursing myself. I mean, of course, you know, everything's gonna go, go, go downhill here in a second, but we're gonna go six square. He's gonna need a six to kill that guy. And he got a four, so this guy's dead. Good job. All right, crow shot again. I'll mark that down. Now that leaves us with just this one alien. One, two, three, four. That's not bad. We actually did a pretty good job of cleaning up the aliens on this turn. Now, let's see here. That's the end of this turn. Nobody has any aliens on them, so we're doing okay. Let's go back to the turn chart, and we'll see what aliens come. We're in luck. Our turn marker shows just two gray aliens. So we only have to roll two dice. We got a four and an eight, so let's go put them on the board. A four goes here, and an eight goes here, and if we don't clear these three aliens out, I'll be pretty, I'll, I'll be pretty sad. Okay, we're going to start with this Maneuver right here. Come on, appease the conscience, conscience of Burke. I got a two. Nope, he's going to move over here and he is going to say too bad to you guys. So that's the end of that. Okay, we've got our turn now. Ripley, one, two, three squares away. She can now join this fight and she is. And she needs a six or an eight. I think I'm gonna go with the eight. I'm just gonna use all my actions to shoot that alien. And we got a five, so that's dead. And I'll mark that ammunition down on her chart. Next, we're going to go with Hicks. And he's shooting one, two, three, four, five, six squares away. We're just going to go for... Uh, let's look at his ammo. He's still got a decent amount of ammo left. Well, not really. Okay, he's going to go with just shooting at an eight. Everybody's just going to shoot. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that was fantastic. All right. So Hicks shot. A pwn needs to hit. He's also going to go for the eight. He's just going to go for a long shot, use all his actions, and go for that eight. Oh, I rolled that way off the board. And that one collided with Crow. So a three. That does kill this one. That helps. And last but not least, we have Crow. Now, let's see here. I think he's actually going to move one square over and then take the shot. Because we only have this one alien coming, and all these guys could probably take it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's six squares away. So he needs a one because he used one action to move. So he needs a one or a zero. Oh, I saw the zero for a second. Oh well, not the end of the world. That's the end of that round. Let's go to our turn chart to see what happens next after we move this alien. One, two, three, four. All right, we made it to the point where 
they can start dropping back. All the Marines have realized this is a losing battle. They're not going to be able to take out all the aliens coming into operations. So they can start falling back, and they can also use that torch to hopefully open that door. So we can move the turn down. Now I get one in the blue and two in the gray, and I've got a blue die and two red dice to signify this. The blue is, well, obviously blue. Sadly, I don't have any gray dice. So we got we have one extra one. So we're going to roll that one. Okay. I'm going to roll that one again. Six. All right. So the blue one's in nine, and then these three are for the gray ones. All right, let's go put them on. All right, the blue one's here at a nine, and we got a... Seven, six, and a three. All right, there's our aliens. We've got five aliens. Now we can start dropping back. I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I think it's going to be a pwn is going to drop back to start working on this door. He's at the, he has the least amount of ammo. I've been keeping track. He's only got three shots left of this pulse rifle. So I think if he drops back, that'd be my best bet. Hicks has a couple more shots than he does, but not many. He's got four more shots than he does left in this, I should say, four more shots left. And Crow, he's just doing fine. He's really only been taking one shot a turn. So we're going to start with Ripley. One, two, three squares away. She, again, is just going to go for that big old eight and hopefully take this alien out. <laughs> no, she is not going to take the alien out. And I'm going to mark that down on her ammo tracker. Great. Okay, that means Hicks is next. Two squares away. He's going to shoot. Oh, should I take the nine and just call it a day? I think that's our best bet. But I really need somebody to get back. Oh, I've got a plan. All right, we got a plan. Not a good plan, but I got a plan. Ripley should have moved over one. That would have been a good plan. But that's not how the plan worked. And Hicks moves up. He's going to have an issue. But he could move back one. Now, eh, yuck. I'm trying to see, maybe I might have Crow get down here. I think it's going to be a pwn. He'll get down to the fastest and start working on this door. All right. Hicks is going to take this one out at a nine. I have to kill this alien. Now he has one more action, and he's going to fire one, two, three, four, five, six squares away, or they all get about, they are equally, I'm going to have him shoot this one. Well, he's not going to shoot it anyway. Okay, a pwn is going to take... Actually, a pwn, I think, might take one shot before... I, go, I can't really move then. One to here. Oh, it'd be nice if you go one, two, and then one, two, three, and start on that door. Hmm. Crow can take one out. It's going to bring all three of these down. A bunch of yuck is about to happen. I think we're still going to wait one more turn before I go back because I need to take some of these aliens out. One, two, three, four, five. So he's going to take a two. He's going to roll it a seven to take one of these guys out. And he got it. Okay. And then he is going to fire it a two to try to take that one out. And he didn't get it. Okay. We're good. We're good. He's down to one shot. And Crow, he's going to fire at this one and he needs a six. And what did he get? We'll find out. A one. Perfect. He took this one out. Way to go, Crow. Okay. We are going to move these two. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Okay, that's not the end of the world here. All right, let us go to our turn chart and see where it comes in. Our turn chart shows that a gray and a red one are going to come in. A red one, whoops, I'm on the camera. Yeah, a red one. A red one's right where all our Marines are. This is supposed to signify the alien that came up from under the floor and took Hudson out in the movie. So we're going to move our turn marker down, and I'm going to roll a red die here, and a black die will be the gray die. So we got a one and a three. Let's go put them on the board. All right, the gray one goes here, and the red one, oh, so close to crow, is right there. All right, hopefully Ripley can do some good here. One, two, three squares away. Ripley really needs to take these guys out. She needs, she's going to roll a six, and then she's going to move out of the way to over to here. So she's going to try to take that one out. She needs a six. And she got a three, so that one's dead. Next is Hicks. He's going to shoot one, two over here and kill this one. He needs a, well, a nine. I think that's a good number to roll for. Let's kill this one. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six squares away. He needs a two. So we're going to shoot that one at a two or less. Or do we let it come closer? Because I'm running out of bullets. I think we go ahead and shoot it at a two. Oh, we missed. Okay. 
Now Crow, Hoofda. Oh, Pone is next. A Pone is gonna actually do his move. He's gonna start one, two, three, running down here. He's gotta get that door open. And Crow, oh Crow, please don't die. This could be bad news. Crow is one square away, he needs a five or a 12. I think we're gonna go with the 12. Kill the alien, I think that's our best bet. Now we have to do acid. A two, he's wounded. Oh, that's no good. Okay, that's it's, it's not terrible, but it could be better. And this one's gonna move one, two, three, four towards us. Now the pulse rifles all come with a reload. So if I want to, I can reload these weapons. It does take some actions, but I, I can reload them if I want to. So the two ways of getting ammo back is one, you can reload your weapon. That takes eight actions, eight actions. It's a lot of actions to reload a weapon. I could switch to his backup weapon, where in this case, it is his shotgun. In the reactor room, the pulse rifles weren't available, so it would actually be his pistol. But now back in operations, we've gained all the wreckage from the APC. So we can switch our pulse rifle to the shotgun or we could switch to our pistol. We'd obviously switch to our shotgun. That's probably what we're gonna start doing because we're pretty much out of bullets with Hicks. And we're almost out of bullets with the pawn, but he has to work on this door. So now that that's done, we can move on. Things are getting a little bit easier for the Marines. It seems to be a lull in the wave of aliens coming up here. So we got one in the blue and one in the gray, which isn't too bad. I've got a blue and a black die. Okay, the black is the gray and the blue is the blue. So you got a six and a four. All right, not too bad. Now Ripley's gotta take a shot here. One, two, three squares away. She has to take this alien out. At three squares, she needs a six or an eight. I think we're gonna go with the eight. I really need this one dead. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot him. We got a five, good, he's dead. Now our wounded crow, oh crow, crow, well, not crow yet. Hicks, Hicks is next. Hicks is gonna spend his three actions to start switching to his shotgun. So he only has one action left before he's gonna get his shotgun out, which means that he would still be able to shoot it next turn with two of his actions. Crow is going to six squares away. I think he's gotta take a shot. He needs a three though, look at he's wounded. His stats get so bad. All right, needs a three or less. What do you get? A one, yes! It's like this magic thing. I pull him up and there's a one. All right, this guy dies. I'm gonna mark another one for Crow. I forgot to move a pawn. and pawn's gonna move one, two, and now he is gonna start work on that door. So I am gonna take the door marker and I'm gonna put it back on our turn chart. You'll see it when we move back over there. The aliens are going to move. One, two, three, four. They're coming down. Well, he is, I guess just one. Now we're gonna to go to our turn chart and check to see what happens next. Now, as you see, I put our door marker right here. I'm actually gonna lay it down so it's kind of not interfering with this one here. And when we get to this square right here, the door opens and we can go through. Technically, our Marines can start falling back now if they want to, but we keep seeing an alien in front of us. So we're gonna move this down one and only one alien, he appears in the blue. So we're just gonna use this red die. And he got a five. So let's put the one on five and we'll go back to the action. So the one that goes here on a five. Next, a pawn is working on the door. Ripley's gonna shoot. Burke and Newt have both gone. They don't do anything. Now we got Ripley. One, two, three squares again. She's gonna use that pulse rifle with an eight. Come on, oops, I dropped my die. Come on. She got a four, good, dead alien. Hicks then has one action left and he's going to pull out his shotgun now. And remember, you only, now remember, he only has eight shots with his shotgun, if I can talk and not trip over my words. He's gonna move back one with one of his actions, and that's it. Crow's gonna move two over here, and we're just gonna let this alien come down, because I think we can get him if he gets closer. So this alien then is gonna move one, two, three, four, and look, we actually have a pretty good shot at him. I think we're doing okay. Let's go back to the turn chart and see what happens. Again, we got a nice, easy turn here for the Marines. We got one in the gray, so we're just gonna roll that one right here and it's a five. Let's put him on the board and go back to the action. That alien is gonna start right here. Now, let's see what we can do. He's still working on the door. We got Ripley first, one, two, three. Again, she's gonna shoot at that eight. She loves shooting at that eight. It works really well. Four, one, two, three, four. Hicks has a 
Oh, his shotgun's not that good. Okay, an eight. Good. She got it. And she can still move. Oh, no, she can't move. That's all her actions. Hicks is going to... Oh, Hicks might just stay there. Crow is going to jump him, though. He's going to go over here. Well, you know, Hicks could peer around this corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And just use all his actions to try to shoot that one with his shotgun at a five. Let's do that. Let's go for a five or less. Yeah, we got it. Good work, Hicks. And we'll mark down one on his shotgun, so he's got seven left. Oh, and I killed the alien. We're doing pretty good. There are no aliens. Huh, first time for everything. The board is cleared of aliens. Let's go to the turn chart and see what happens next. Okay, we reached the door marker. Let's bust open that door and get out of here. I have to put two in the blue. So as you can see, if you look at these numbers coming up, it's going to start getting pretty tough. We got to get out of here. So we're going to put two in the blue. And here's the dice. Oh, we're going to put three in the blue. Nine and a four. Okay. Nine, four, and three. So we got a nine, a four, and a three. All right. I think this is just going to be Sprint City. These two are going in. Well, I, I lied. We got to go in turn order. Newt goes in. Ripley's going to go one, two, three. Hicks is going to go. One, two, three, and a pawn is going to move into this room. Now, once you get into this room, you can't go back in. Poor Crow is going to move right here by himself. You know what? Actually, Hicks is going to stay right here. Because that means Crow can go two, and everybody can get in next turn. I think that's the best plan. And these aliens are going to move one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Now, the next turn, we can get in, and we don't even have to shoot these aliens. So according to our turn chart, we have to put three on the blue and one on the gray. But I'm not even going to do that because when it's our turn, these guys are just going to move right in. So that's going to be the end of that. Let's go to the turn chart and we'll kind of do a couple rounds over there in a row. So where we stand right now, here's the round in which we did our first move. Then we were going to supposed to spawn the aliens again and we moved again. Now we're going on to the next turn. But once we're all in, we have to count 15 squares down and put this door marker on again. I'm going to zoom out to show you the whole turn chart here. Look at that thing. And we're going to count 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. When it gets to here, this the door bursts open, and all the aliens are just going to start pouring in, and there's nothing we can stop them. So now we're going to go back to the air ducts, and I'm going to explain that scenario a little bit. Okay, all our Marines have made it into here. These aliens are no more, no longer needed. The air duct scenario, he's dead. We're just going to get rid of him. There is a little scenario where you can put an alien on him and watch the alien eat him. I just, I don't even do that. I just know he dies. So now we can reorder our Marines in any order we want. Now, normally when you complete a scenario, you get to flip a person from either an incapacitated to wounded or wounded to good. But this is all considered one scenario. So he stays wounded. So he's going to go there. Newt and Ripley do have to still go first, technically, because of a special thing that Newt has. She has tunnel knowledge. Yes, she does. At each decision square, Newt must roll a six or less to remember the direction to the landing pad. If she fails, she may not move off the decision square. She may make one roll each time, and she has two actions. So she's able to move two. Now, where the decision squares are these things right here. I don't know if you can see it, so I'm going to zoom in. It's these squares right here. Whenever she comes to one of these and tries to move off it, she has to roll. And if she gets a six or less, we can continue. Otherwise, she stops there and tries to figure it out. Also, I have to remember that she doesn't even know to go in here until she rolls a six or lower. So this could get really sticky really fast if we don't make it out in time. Now, a lot of this is going to, you're going to watch me just move these guys. It kind of gets, I'm going to zoom out, and it's going to go all the way through here. A lot of the alien placement really doesn't happen. A lot of this is watching, and hopefully Newt's making it out. And it gets kind of tense, because if you start missing these, that means bigger chance of aliens coming in and getting us, because they eventually will catch up to us. This is a long air ducts. You only see a little bit of it here. It pans all the way out to the end of the board. So the more she misses, the more chance the aliens have of eating us. 
So you're gonna see me move these a lot and I'm not even gonna to go to the turn chart until it actually means something, like an alien we place somewhere in this area, okay? So we're gonna start here. First, Newt has to know if we're supposed to go to the air ducts. She did not, so we're gonna move the turn chart one. Let's try that dance again. Okay, she made it. So now she can move two. Ripley's gonna move in with her. You know, I'm gonna set this camera up different so you can see the action. There, that's a little bit more fun. Now, now you're just gonna watch us go through these air ducts and you know, hopefully we'll get to the end. Now, Newt is on another one of those squares. So she's got a roll. She has a six or better. Oh, she failed again. So we gotta move the turn and she's gonna try again. Okay, she made it this time. So she's gonna go one, two. Ripley's gonna go one, two, three. And now the next person to go is gonna be Hicks. He's going one, two, three. A pawn is next. And then poor Crow has taken up the rear. And he's wounded, so his gun's not shooting very well. We'll see how that pans out. So we turn the move the turn marker again and move two. One, two. Everybody's gonna just keep on moving. Hope the aliens stay at bay here. Now the aliens aren't actually gonna come in until we get to that 15th turn marker or one appears on one of these squares. And when it does, I'll show you that on the turn chart. So let's continue. We move the turn marker and Newt goes. Come on, Newt. Let's get us safely to the drop ship. Bishop's already remote piloted it down. It's ready for us. Here we go. So she goes one and now she has to roll again. And she made it. So two this way. One, two, three. Newt's turn again. First we move the turn chart. Then go one, two. Now Newt can't roll unless she actually is moving off of the square, which is going to be now. Since she's moving off, she can make that roll. Oh, she didn't make the roll. All right. Hopefully she makes it this time. She did. Okay, she can go one, two. All right, we're gonna move ourselves like this, and then we're gonna switch the camera up and move it over this way some more. We're all, we're moving right along. Things are going okay. So let's move the camera over to the side. Now we're getting closer to the door breaking down, but as it stands, there is one with a box in it, and that's one blue alien appearing inside the air ducts. Let's see where it appears. Oh no, there's two. A one and a four. Let's go put them on the board. Now we have to place our aliens at one and four. They're finally in the air ducts. They're coming through. Crow's gonna have to hold them off while we keep going. That's the plan. All right, so we're gonna start again. Oh, we have a decision square we have to do. So Newt has to roll a six or lower. And she got a zero. Good job, Newt. One, two. One, two. And everybody's just going to keep on moving. Even Crow's going to keep going. Hope these aliens don't get them. Now, they move four squares. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, that one has to stop there. And they both have to fall over because apparently that's what they do. There. It's. Just, I apologize for that. My board has seen so much play in these standees. Like I said, I wish they were miniatures. But that back in the day, it was kind of tough to just see that kind of stuff. Um, but no, I've taped this board together. It's been through a lot. We're going to move our turn chart down, and there's nothing happening over in our turn chart, so I'm just going to keep on going. Newt needs to make another decision. And she makes it. One, two. And Crow's running. One, two, three. Sadly, he only moves half as fast as these guys. So eventually they're going to get him. I know that. All right, let's go to the next one. The turn marker goes down. Before we go into our next turn, I just wanted to show you, I moved this turn chart down. We're almost up to a gray one, which means an alien's gonna come in the gray. And this door is almost busted through with three more turns and they're just gonna start pouring in. Now let's get back to the action. Okay, let's make a run for it. And here come the aliens. Two, three, four, they're coming. Crow's got to try to take out two. I don't think he's going to do it. These guys just keep on running. It's the best thing to do here. So we're going to move our turn chart down. And Newt's going to start. I know this seems like so uneventful, but it really isn't. Because you can just feel as that turn chart gets closer and closer to that door marker. 
just these aliens are going to just keep on coming. So now poor Crow here is going to have to take a shot, I think. He's not going to be able to make it otherwise. He needs a two squares away, a six. So we're going to shoot that alien. And he got that one, but I don't think he's going to get this one. Hopefully he can fend it off. I maybe should have left the pawn back here to sit. Nope, that's okay. You know, Vasquez self-sacrificed herself in the movie. Crow's sacrificing himself. So this person, this alien's going to move four and go right on Crow's card. I'll put his card right here. Poor Crow. And there, he's, there he is. Now we're going to also move the turn marker down. And the turn marker shows that we're going to be putting one in the gray. Oops, knocked the door marker over. I'm just going to lay that down. And next turn, all the aliens are going to come in, and I'll show you how that works. So we're going to roll our gray alien, a five. All right, let's go put him on the board. So the five is right here. He moves one. Let's see what happens to poor Crow. Crow is grabbed, and that's really, I think, going to be the end of Crow. We're just going to, I guess you're just going to leave him there. That's, that's going to be the deal. And now we're going to keep on moving. Now, Newt is on one of those squares. We only have two left. Hopefully she can get both of them, and I think we'll be in good shape here. But she did not. She did not get that one. So that's, that's, that's terrible. All right, that means Crow is dead. We're going to move our turn tracker down. One, two, three, four. This alien's coming. Our turn tracker shows that the door breaks open and the aliens start pouring in. Now I'll go to where those go in and I'll show you how that works. Now I've panned out as far as I can go and this is the whole air duct scenario that we've been running through. An alien is going to be here. This signifies the lead alien of just a horde of aliens. So there, were, the attention in this scenario comes with these squares. If she fails too many of them, these aliens will eventually get to us because they move twice as fast as us. So eventually they're going to get to us. So it, it all, a lot of this bank is banking on Newt making these rolls. So our next roll for Newt. She did make it, and she's going to start running, and all these guys are going to run. And now we got this extra alien just hanging out, but here comes the horde. And it's going to start coming at us as fast as it can. We're going to move our turn marker down and go again. All our guys keep moving, and here comes the alien. Eventually we have to take that one out. Now it doesn't matter if we take this one out, there's going to be one right behind it. Now we're going to go to our turn chart. Our turn chart shows that an alien is going to appear in the red numbers of our air duct scenario. So we'll roll our red die and put that alien on the board. I got a six. So we're going to go put him on the board. The six is right here and he moves up. So we've got a couple of aliens we've got to take out even before this horde gets here. So let's continue running. Newt's got to keep on going. And hopefully she can get this last one. Oh, so close. And I just realized something. A pawn has only one shot left with his, <laughs> with, his, uh, with his pulse rifle. I might have to have him and Hicks switch spots here and here. So our next action, next turn. Hicks is going to move one, and he's going to shoot this with his shotgun. Now I can't see it. Oh, this is bad news. I got a plan. All right. A pawn is going to take that one out, and then eventually these two are going to swap spots. So he's going to shoot one, two squares away with his last shot with his pulse rifle. He needs a nine. Now, I could switch to his other weapon, but being in here is tough to just try to switch weapons because you just don't have the time. These aliens keep coming. So he's then going to move one more. Now these guys come. All right, we're getting close. Newt goes one, and she's got to make this roll. She does it. Okay, I think we're going to be okay. Oh, thank you, Newt. Oh. Oofda. Okay, now Hicks is only going to move one, and Apone's going to go one, two, three over the top of him. And now the aliens are going to move. Newt's going to move again. I keep moving the turn chart, but there's nothing really that's going on in the turn chart. Hicks is going to shoot that alien. He's got his shotgun, so he's going to attack him with a six. He's going to go for that six, two squares away. Come on, Hicks, let's not blow this. 
It's off his camera. Dang it. Oh, no, he missed. All right, he's going to shoot again. He needs a six. He got it. Okay, but he can only move one square. I think he might still be okay. Here come the horde. One, two, three, four. And now Newt moves out, Ripley moves out, and Apollo moves out. And he can move one, two, three. Yeah, I think we're going to be good. One, two, three, four. Yep, we made it. woof -ta! And that's it. We made it through the air duct scenario, and we made it with our with four guys. That's not too bad. We started with, what, 16 Marines? We're down to four? Well, I guess Bishop. He's landed the dropship. So it's not too bad. Let's remove this alien and this dice. Well, all right. We made it off LV-426. We survived. Hicks and Apone made it, so... I guess we did a little bit better in the movie. In the movie, only Hicks and Newton Ripley made it along with Bishop. So we did a little bit better in the movie, but not by much. You can see how this game takes turns all the time, and you never know where these aliens are going to come out from or how many are going to come out. And it's just so much fun to see that tension throughout this entire game. Now, there is still one more scenario left to play, and that's Ripley taking on the Queen alien. But we're going to have to wait for the next video to find out if Ripley can defeat the Queen. Also, I'm going to give a short review and uh, who might like and who might not like this game. And does it stand the test of time? It's been around for a long time. You'll have to join me to find out. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, hit the subscribe button and also the notification button. And then you'll find out when that queen fight is coming. Also, any other playthroughs I do, you'll know when they come up. And please leave any questions or comments below. Will Ripley defeat the Queen? Will I give this game a good review? To find out, I need you to meet me at the table. Time.